This time, on the world's most amazing videos, a fireworks factory explodes, making thousands of terrified residents run for their lives. An apartment high-rise collapses as residents flee. A wannabe stuntman comes up short. A stunt goes wrong, sending skydivers into a horrifying death spiral. And what was a celebration for a Laker championship win turns into fanatical riots. These are the incredible true life stories of people who face their most desperate hour and live to tell about it. Everything you are about to see is real. Real people, real danger, real excitement. Get ready to experience the thrill of a lifetime. You are about to witness the world's most amazing videos. Tampa, Florida. A lowrider convention kicks into high gear. And the place is jumping. The bigger the bounce, the better the score. Drivers stand close to their vehicles, maneuvering by remote control. But these cars and trucks are not designed for this kind of pounding. One bad bounce can lead to disaster. Glenn Strickland hopes his pickup truck flies highest of all. He flips the switch and collapses in agony. I just heard an explosion, seen a sewer blur, something coming at my face. When I hit the ground, I just kind of rolled over, trying to figure out what had happened. I just heard a bunch of screaming and yelling and people running around. Watch again. A tire explodes and breaks apart, sending the jagged steel rim flying at Glenn's face. He has no time to react. The rim looked like a saw blade where it broke apart at, real jagged edges. I could taste the blood in my mouth from my gums and my cheek had been split open. It was a freak accident. Glenn knows it could have been worse. Every now and then I go back and watch the tape. I just reminded I was very lucky that day. And I could have been killed. Houston, Texas. Juan Gabriel es un gran astro popular en América Latina. Apenas ha empezado el show y ya el público lo aplaude de pie. Y Juan Gabriel recién entra en calor. Hace sus pasos típicos con la soltura de un hombre mucho más joven. Pero entonces... Mientras baila, se entusiasma con su propia música. Da unos pasos de fantasía y tropieza. El astro mexicano cae metro y medio y se golpea la cabeza. El público clama por su ídolo lesionado. Pero Juan Gabriel ha debido retirarse. Va al hospital con una muñeca fracturada, un corte en la cabeza y el ego lastimado. Los Ángeles. Miles de entusiastas fanáticos se concentran en el Sport Arena. Los Lakers de Los Ángeles han ganado el campeonato de básquetbol nacional. Pero grupos antisociales están convirtiendo la noche de celebración en una acción de vandalismo.
Comienzan con fogatas. La muchedumbre congestiona las vías públicas. Los vándalos bloquean autos que buscan la salida. Rápidamente se crea un campo de batalla. La anarquía degenera prontamente en saqueos. Algunos descargan su salvajismo contra un furgón de prensa. Otros son tan osados que hasta atacan a un patrullero policial. La policía los ahuyenta, pero la mecha está encendida. Llegan refuerzos policiales preparados para combatir. Es hora de recuperar las calles. Los agentes avanzan. Disparan balas de goma para dispersar a los sujetos. La muchedumbre comienza a dispersarse. Hay 11 arrestados. Lentamente se restablece el orden. Pero el daño está hecho. Y el costo es medio millón de dólares. Una noche de alegría termina en un vergonzoso despliegue de violencia. Por obra de unos pocos vándalos que se valen de ocasiones de festejos. Como excusa para crear infiernos. Ática, Kansas. Los cazadores de tormentas persiguen una serie de nubes en forma de embudo. Se escuchan todas las alarmas que indican un tornado y en ese momento nosotros estamos en el lugar. Se puede ver todo alrededor de nosotros. Cielos, casi se lleva mi ventana. Los cazadores de emociones están a punto de encontrar más de lo que buscan. No estaríamos aquí si esto no nos pusiera nerviosos. De pronto las nubes se transforman en un monstruoso tornado. Estábamos impresionados con eso, pero intentábamos mantenernos concentrados. ¡Mira cómo gira! Scott McPartland ahora se enfrenta al tornado más grande que haya visto. ¡Santo cielo! Tiene 550 metros de ancho y se mueve muy rápido. Está allí, justo en ese campo. Atraviesa la carretera y se dirige hacia un pueblo cercano. Luego, se acerca a una granja. ¡Está cruzando el camino! ¡Allí va! ¡Mira esa casa! ¡La casa se está desarmando! ¡Dios mío! ¡Dios mío! ¿Viste eso? ¡Esa casa se está despedazando! El tornado se traga la casa en materia de segundos. ¡Dios mío! ¡Dios mío! Luego la eleva por los cielos. Podías ver cómo el techo giraba en torno a ese tornado. ¡Tenemos que volver después que pase esto! Nuestra primera reacción fue pensar si había alguien en esa casa y en cómo podíamos conseguir ayuda rápidamente. Los cazadores de tormentas temen lo peor. Tengo un registro de la casa desarmándose. ¿Cómo alguien podría sobrevivir? Dios mío. Pero increíblemente, la familia había llegado al sótano a tiempo. Y logran salir de este infierno vivos. Pudimos ver a la naturaleza en su estado más violento. Y pudimos salir de allí sin que nadie resultara herido. Eso para mí es una experiencia increíble y muy inspiradora. Dios mío, Dios mío, ¿viste eso? Los Ángeles, California. 
just before dawn. The van is stalled in the fast lane of a busy freeway. And that's a recipe for disaster. The empty vehicle gets blasted by a Mustang at nearly 70 miles an hour. The force of the collision rockets the van several hundred feet. Inside the Mustang, a young couple is too stunned to get out. Paramedics are coming! A news cameraman calls for help. The couple's nightmare has just begun. The car swerves to avoid their Mustang and skids out of control. Five cars are now involved in the pileup, and the man and the woman are still sitting ducks. The cameraman waves his camera light as a warning to oncoming traffic, but it doesn't work. The couple is battered in another violent collision. The Mustang and the van are totaled. Incredibly, the young woman suffers the night's only injury, a sprained ankle. Everyone walks away because this road was paved with a little luck. Ennis, Montana. Highway Patrol Officer Jason Hildenstab is in hot pursuit of a fugitive killer. The suspect, George Davis, barrels through a winding mountain pass at speeds topping 130 miles an hour. I normally wouldn't drive at those speeds in any typical pursuit, but Davis has shot eight people by this point and shot a deputy as well, and I wasn't going to let him get away. But the officer has a big problem. When I came on, I hadn't had a chance to fuel up my car the night before, so I was buried on empty, and I was expecting actually to run out of gas at any second. He's got to end this chase now. So I got a little closer than I normally would, and... At that point, he took one more look up into his rearview mirror, and then he just hit his brakes. The crazed gunman crouches behind the rear bumper and opens fire. Hilton Stab fires two rounds of buckshot. I just wanted him to experience the feeling of bullets flying his way. I remember looking at the, the muzzle blast from his gun and thinking I'm dead. The officer dives for cover just as Sheriff's Deputy David Conway arrives and unloads his 12-gauge. Deputy Conway was firing from behind me towards Davis, and this caused Davis to get back into his car and flee the scene again. His cruiser badly damaged, Officer Hilden Stab rushes to join the deputy, and the deadly pursuit rages on. I wanted to kill him. I wanted to get him stopped before he killed me or killed somebody else. The chase nears the state line. Up ahead, an Idaho state trooper lays down a spike strip. Get ready to get the hell out of the way, though, because we don't know what he's going to do. Watch out! Bullseye. The spikes blow out the car's tires. But the killer is not going down without a fight. Oh, yeah. 
Watch again. You can see the gun fly out of his hand and land on our, our trunk and then fall back into his car. Come on, stay down now, stay down right there. Officer Hildenstab's leg is broken in the crash. The state trooper drags him to safety. Fortunately, Davis is too hurt to keep shooting. Put your hands outside the door, right now. The suspect is taken into custody. He receives the largest prison sentence ever in the state of Montana, 11 life terms. Thanks to the bold determination of officers like Jason Hildenstad, a cold-blooded killer is off the streets. <laughs> Jefferson, Georgia. Engines roar at the Peach State Speedway. For Joe McCannon in the Yellow Firebird, tonight's race is all about family and friends. Joe's oldest son, Michael, is his crew chief. And he's locked in a battle for first place with his best friend. We had lapped the third place car that day. That's how fast we was. With only half a lap to go, the racing buddies collide. It was just a racing accident. He was on the high side and I was on the low, and we were just trying our best to win. The drivers hit the wall. Joe is fine, but his son Michael doesn't know that. Instinctively, he runs onto the track to check on his dad. It's a tragic mistake. plows into Joe, brutally launching his son 50 feet down the asphalt. His lifeless body lies sprawled on the track. Joe can't believe what he's just seen and is terrified of what he will find when he reaches his son. I was the first one too, Michael. Blood was coming out of his mouth. I just thought, oh Lord, I thought the worst. Miraculously, Michael is alive. He tries to get up, but is too weak. I said, no, son, don't move, no, don't move. Squeeze dead his hand if you're OK. I woke up in the hospital, just screaming and crying, and we're so glad you're back. And I'm thinking, where did I go? <laughs> An amazing stroke of luck may have saved Michael's life. While he leans into the window, his aunt cries out to him. Michael looks up a split second before impact, sparing him almost certain decapitation. My head might have been laying in my dad's lap. Michael makes a full recovery, but his dad is haunted by the accident and quits racing forever. I don't believe I could be as competitive as we used to after the wreck because in the back of my mind, it would always be, where's everybody at? I just don't feel like I would be I'm not the one to get back in the car. I love my dad, you know? And I, I didn't want to lose him out there on the track. La Paz, Bolivia. A tense hostage standoff. Behind that wooden door, a man is holding his wife captive and threatening to kill her. Police know they have little time. Something makes them run for cover. But only for a moment. Again, they rush the door. Here's what scared them. 
the hiss of gas from an open propane tank. The homicidal husband has turned his apartment into a bomb. When the sound subsides, the cops assume the coast is clear. blast hurls the officers through the air onto the ground, a floor below. They drag the deranged husband from the rubble. His wife is clearly in shock, but alive. The ambush leaves several officers with third-degree burns. This is one explosive domestic dispute they're fortunate to survive. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. A fire on a hotel roof rages out of control. If the blaze spreads to the floors below, the entire building will be lost. To isolate the inferno, three firemen volunteer for a dangerous job. They begin the risky task of fighting the blaze head on. When suddenly, The roof gives way. A thousand pounds of fiery debris rains down on the firemen. One is nearly knocked over a railing to the pavement below. When it comes down, as quick as it come down, I'm thinking I'm either going to go over the rail because this rail's not going to hold, or the debris's going to get me. He's safe. Firefighter Jack Thompson is nowhere to be found. They fear he's been buried beneath the rubble. The other men anxiously comb through the debris. Then, an amazing sight. Jack steps through a doorway, unscathed. Watch closely. The force of the roof collapse actually knocks Jack through a doorway and out of the path of destruction. It's like, boom, in your face just that quick, and it's just a glow, and it's flames everywhere. They think I'm underneath the stucco. In fact, I'm in the room. They couldn't see because the ceiling in the room fell. Insulation's on fire underneath my feet, and I'm stomping, <laughs> walking back to the door. I can hear Ma saying, we got to find Jack. <laughs> and I'm saying, just get out of the way, <laughs> and I'll walk out. <laughs> Ironically, the frightening collapse saves Jack's life, just when it looked like he was knocking on death's door. Five, four, three, Norway. Two, one, go. Base jumpers free fall off a 3,000-foot cliff. They're packing parachutes. These adrenaline junkies don't plan to use them. Not until they're less than 700 feet from the ground. The first two jumpers deploy their chutes. But Avery Battenhop, wearing the helmet cam, wants an even bigger thrill. He waits. Seconds from the ground, he pulls the ripcord. The chute tangles. Below, nothing but rocks. Avery plunges from the sky and slams into the hillside. His friends lose sight of him. They fear he has been torn to pieces on the jagged boulders. Then they hear a voice. I'm OK! Not only is Avery alive, he's virtually unharmed. Incredibly, he lands on a small patch of grass that breaks his fall. That sucked. Hardcore. I look up above my head, and all I see is just a little ball of nylon. 
when I hit the ground, it was like, you know, instant stars and days and confused and it knocked me silly. And it just took me a, it took me a few seconds to really gather my composure and thought I was going to die. You know, my first thought was, wow, look, heaven looks just like Norway. Avery lives for danger. But the thrill may be gone after this death-defying plunge. A robber tries to escape on a motorcycle and gets intervened. And a fireworks factory gets blown off the map. Then later, a skydiving stunt sends two people into a death spiral. As the world's most amazing videos continues. Plainfield, Indiana. Un hombre buscado por conducir ebrio lleva a la policía en una persecución a 160 km por hora. Un sujeto acaba de pasarse un discopar en la esquina de Brookside con Stanford. Pasó una escuela y el discopar de Simon. El descuidado sospechoso no respeta ninguna señal. Está conduciendo como si no le importara si vive o muere. Más adelante, lo espera otro coche de policía. El sospechoso de pronto gira y se dirige a él. Va contra el auto de policía. El oficial Mike Mason por poco evita un choque de frente. Estaba decidido a no volver a la cárcel y no le importaba hacer lo que fuera. Él intentaba matarme. El auto del sospechoso acelera. El conductor no puede mantenerse en el camino. Choca contra un poste de electricidad. Hay cables en el suelo. Un transformador explotó. El auto del oficial Scott Spillman está a unos pocos metros. De repente veo que un enorme poste se abalanza sobre mi auto. Tenía que ser rápido para salir de allí. O sinceramente no sé qué habría ocurrido. El poste por poco alcanza al oficial. Pero ahora hay 750 mil voltios en plena calle. El oficial ignora el peligro. Sale del auto y pisa el pavimento electrificado por los cables. Pensé que el oficial Spillman iba a morir electrocutado. A pesar del peligro, está decidido a terminar su trabajo. En ese momento no lo pensé. Solo salí del auto. Teníamos que atrapar al bandido. Encuentra al sospechoso en los matorrales, fuera del auto. Finalmente, el oficial Spillman atrapa al hombre. Atención, tengo al sospechoso tendido en el suelo. A esa velocidad no puede saber qué va a ocurrir. Solo quiero estar seguro de que los malos estén fuera de las calles. George, Utah. Extreme sport competitors battle for a position in an event called Street Luge. These sleds have no brakes and reach blistering speeds of 70 miles an hour. Racer Johnny Moore knows it will take a perfect performance to win. It was the X Games qualifier. All the best street lugers in the world were in St. George, Utah on this hill. Johnny barrels into a dangerous curve. Watch again. Johnny and another racer collide, then slam feet first into a wall of hay bales. Johnny's foot is completely bent back by the impact. We hit these alfalfa bales and it was like running into a brick wall. It was like somebody hit me with a baseball bat. Next thing I know, pull my leg up out of the hay and there's just two bones sticking out. 
It's a horrifying discovery. His foot is nearly severed at the ankle. The other racer cradles his wounded competitor. Oh my God. Hey, we need a doctor or something, man. The only thing that was keeping my foot attached to my leg was my artery and my tendon that was wrapped inside my racing sock. Johnny regains the use of his foot and leg after 30 staples, 50 stitches, and 100 nightmares of a race gone wrong. Taiwán. La policía aérea se entrena para tareas de rescate en el río. El objetivo es llegar a una balsa de supuestas víctimas y salvarlas desde el aire. Pero este no será un ejercicio de rutina. El helicóptero se aproxima a la balsa. Un tripulante baja al rescate. Repentinamente, falla el motor. El piloto logra elevarse un poco. Pero no es suficiente. Véanlo otra vez. El operador de rescate se aferra a una cuerda, pero pierde el agarre. El helicóptero se estrella directamente encima de él. No hay señales de vida. Pero entonces... Aparece el piloto, seguido por el copiloto. Increíblemente, hasta el tripulante que estaba debajo sigue vivo. Por fortuna, no hay pérdidas de vida en un ejercicio que se convierte en auténtica misión de supervivencia. Hebrew, Utah. The aftermath of a highway accident. Kevin Garbwall's truck is overturned, but he got out unharmed. State troopers keep an eye on passing traffic as he goes back into the truck to get his registration. They don't notice what's speeding toward them from the other direction. Officers run for their lives as a van and trailer crash through the snow and smash into Kevin's truck. And Kevin is still inside. You know, I had just sent that kid back in there to get his stuff, and one of my biggest fears in this whole thing is that we had actually injured that kid. The cops are relieved to see Kevin walk out holding his vehicle registration. He's in shock, but he survived a second collision. I didn't know really what to do. I was a little uh, scared and frightened because I didn't know whether I was going to make it out of that. There are eight people in the van, all members of a rock band. None is hurt seriously after a surprise appearance that could have cost them their lives. Carbon County, Pennsylvania. TV news cameraman Rob Gill sets up on the side of a highway, shooting a report on an unsafe runaway truck ramp. There were several truck accidents on this ramp before, and trucks would come and flip. So uh, I was just getting some, some general shots of the truck ramp. But less than three minutes after Rob arrives, this minor story becomes breaking news. Gravel should slow the truck, but the truck vaults off the first mound. The second row is like a wall. Uh, 
I was looking through the camera the whole time. I had no idea that the back end of the truck was going to go into the air like that. The driver stumbles out, dazed and stunned by the violent crash. Are you all right? Sir, you all right? I was pretty shocked to see him conscious and walking away from that accident like that. I saw the blood all over his head. You all right? I'm a little bumped up. Paramedics arrive. Despite all the blood, the driver has only minor injuries. His truck fares far worse. Rob has his story and video proof that this truck ramp doesn't prevent crashes, it causes them. The North Atlantic, off the Danish coast. A Chinese cargo ship with 27 men aboard is sinking fast. To make matters worse, the ship is leaking diesel oil and carrying tons of fertilizer. Add seawater, and it's an explosive combination. The wounded vessel rolls to port. The volatile mixture ignites. The sailors escape only minutes before their ship explodes. The crew will sail again and hope their next voyage doesn't end in catastrophe. Shoto, Oklahoma. Drag boats roar down the course at 150 miles an hour, but the race lasts only a second. Driver Dave Ferguson's tail section blows, sending the boat into a savage spiral. Dave's wife is taping the race. Horrified, she runs with the camera. I mean, the boat just disintegrated before our eyes. It's just shocking. I mean, it was just, oh my, oh my God. Pure fear just set in and just started running towards the site of the crash. Dave's three kids are with his wife. Dave is in the sealed boat cockpit called a capsule. As long as it stays afloat, he won't drown. That is, if he's not already dead. When the capsule was in the water, I felt pretty helpless because there's nothing I could do but sit there and watch. The rescue team speeds to the capsule. Unbelievably, they run over it. If the capsule sinks, Dave will drown. The rescuers recover quickly. They find Dave alive and conscious. It's like, man, I know they're freaking out up there. So at that point, I gave them a thumbs up so they knew I was all right. With only minor injuries, Dave looks back and realizes just how lucky he is. I felt like I'd hit a brick wall. I mean, absolutely every inch of my body hurt and hurt bad. I mean, I thought I was dead for a minute. It was like I had to pinch myself and look around a little bit. Dave Ferguson survives this crash, but gives up racing forever. Manila, Philippines. Panicked families run for their lives. Their high-rise apartment building is beginning to tilt. An urgent evacuation is underway, when suddenly... Men, 
women and children are still running for safety when the foundation gives way. The building rips through power lines, threatening to ignite the entire neighborhood. The tower finally comes down in a massive pile of pulverized concrete and steel. Hundreds are now homeless. Their possessions gone forever. Yet amazingly, no one is killed or even injured. Shoddy construction is blamed for the disaster. Criminal charges are filed against the building's owner. He's lucky they don't include murder. Mountain Home, Idaho. The Thunderbirds are the highlight of a weekend air show. Powerful F-16s taxi down the runway. The first four jets take off in a perfect diamond formation. Captain Chris Strickland follows and thunders skyward in a steep vertical climb. The jet reaches 2,500 feet, turns, and dives toward the ground. And then, disaster. Watch again. As the jet levels out, it suddenly loses power. The plane crashes into the ground and explodes in a tumbling ball of fire. Kathy Storico is one of thousands of horrified spectators. Her camera rolls on the terrifying drama. The idea of somebody could actually die right before my eyes, I just didn't like the thought of seeing something like that. Then, an amazing sight. The pilot is out. He is standing up. Captain Strickland is alive. A closer look shows the pilot ejecting less than a second before impact. Here's how it looked from the cockpit. Strickland pulls the ejection handle. The canopy bursts off. A split second later, the airman is launched out of the jet only 150 feet from certain death. The pilot is visibly upset. Oh, man, he just threw down his parachute. He took off his helmet. You could tell he was mad. Oh, man, he's walking back and forth, kicking the ground. An investigation would later reveal that Strickland miscalculated his altitude. It also revealed his heroism. Knowing he's about to crash, he remains inside the doomed jet long enough to steer it away from the crowd. Seventy thousand people came to see a thrilling air show. But thanks to Captain Strickland, no one paid with their lives. Western Missouri. Things seem quiet at the liquor store, but there's been a rash of robberies in the area. Clerk Stefan Eads knows he could be next. Then, three men burst in. One takes aim. A second look shows Stefan facing the gun barrel at point-blank range. It also shows him grab his own gun and fire first. When he put the gun in my face, it was, it was even terms. It was either him or me. Stefan's been hit. Still, he manages to return fire. He calls for help, knowing he may only have minutes to live. A large bloodstain soaks his shirt. Stefan's shot straight through his lung. Every time I took a breath, blood squirted out of my chest. 
I had just gotten my EMT license, so I was very aware of the fact that I did have a punctured lung. I grabbed some paper towels. I needed to stay as calm as I possibly could. Stefan waits five agonizing minutes for help to arrive. The thought had crossed my mind that I could have died. The gunmen are captured. Two are serving life sentences for attempted murder. I feel very lucky to be alive. I mean, this just gave me a new outlook on life. Brisbane, Australia. The national skydiving team practices for the World Championships. With a four-man canopy stack. It's the riskiest of stunts. Skydiver Archie Jameson moves into position. So far, so good. Now it's his teammate's turn. Suddenly, the chutes collide and collapse. The men are bound and tangled in lines and canopy. They plunge toward death at 120 miles an hour. Archie's teammate breaks free. Then, he's clear. The backup chute opens. Too close for comfort. A mid-air collision, which is basically what it is, is something that, you know, no skydiver ever wants them to happen to them. Archie is well aware of the risk from the moment he jumped. Canopy formation is probably the most dangerous discipline in the whole of skydiving. When the chutes collide, Archie spirals in a dizzying downward spin. It's very disorientating um, because of the amount of revolutions that you're doing. I sort of got to a point where I was feeling a bit lightheaded, I guess, because all the blood's rushing to my feet. I thought I was dead there. By Archie's calculation, he cheats death by a mere second. I don't really have a death wish. I really like what I'm doing, and I want to keep doing it for years to come. Up next, bullets fly when renegade bandits open up with AK-47. Then, multiple houses are swallowed up by the raging river. And, a fire factory gets blown into a million pieces, turning a town into a war zone. When the world's most amazing videos continues. Richardson, Texas. Police race to stop a trio of bank robbers heading toward the highway in an SUV. They expect trouble. Stop on the entrance ramp is natural. But not this. Hey, backing up. As Officer Bill Brown approaches, the robbers open fire with AK-47 machine guns. Point blank into his patrol car. His fellow cops think he's riddled with bullets. As I was just about 100 feet away from Officer Brown is when they started shooting. Officer Brown's car, it looked like it just kind of rolled to a stop. I thought he was dead. But then, Officer Brown radios. He's alive and mad. I dug down below the dashboard using the front of the vehicle and the engine block as cover. The chase resumes. Now the fleeing gunman opened fire on Officer Stephen Moore. As I got closer to him, I could tell that they're firing again, and this time they're firing at me. The cops drop back. 
the time they catch up again, the getaway car is stopped dead. Officer Moore approaches carefully, but the suspects are gone. They've carjacked a second vehicle, and they're off again. They don't get far. They plow into a car, then a telephone pole. Officer Robert Skinner is 30 yards away, ready to move in and end it. They've crashed, and that was a pretty good impact. So I'm thinking they're hurt, and they're not going to go anywhere. Well, surprise me, I see them starting to bail out. But the robbers come out shooting. got more and more desperate. The closer we got, the more they're willing to shoot at us. More shots fired, more shots fired. We need help. Shot my car up also, 725. The officers can't shoot back. Innocent people are in the line of fire. They, they don't care what they're shooting at. You know, they could hit it. anybody. It wouldn't matter. But obviously, we're more concerned about who we hit. After a battle that could have killed cops or bystanders, two of the gunmen give up. The other is tracked down when he runs out of ammunition. All are serving hard time. Uh, fortunately, no one got hurt. And these guys were very bad people, and we had to get them off the street. It is very good that they're behind bars. These are guys that don't need to ever be let out. St. George, Utah. Las lluvias implacables y los deshielos convierten un pequeño arroyo en un peligroso río. El río Santa Clara se desborda. Se ensancha en un kilómetro y el correr de sus aguas arrastra todo lo que encuentra en su camino. El lugar en el que el río es más destructivo es un barrio llamado Creekside. Dusty Thompson registra la devastación con una cámara de video. Mira las olas que hay aquí. Nunca había visto algo así. En toda mi vida era algo increíble ver la fuerza del torrente de agua. Pocas horas antes, las casas de sus vecinos estaban a varios metros del río. ¡Miren! ¡Se lleva un árbol! ¡Botó ese árbol! Ahora, los residentes están desesperados por evacuar el lugar. ¡Atrás! ¡Atrás! ¡Aléjense! El... El torrente del río estaba erosionando la tierra de 3 a 5 metros en tan solo 10 o 15 minutos. ¡Se la llevará! ¡Se llevará esa casa blanca! La familia logra salir pocos segundos antes. Lamentablemente, sus pertenencias están en la casa. ¡Ahí va! ¡Ahí va! la casa por completo. Primero se lleva la terraza. Luego el piso. Los cimientos se hundieron. Finalmente, toda la casa. Ahí va, ahí va, miren. En la casa contigua, Robert Taffin no sabe que esto es solo el comienzo. Yo estaba muy lejos del río y a una altura mucho mayor. Pensé que mi casa estaría a salvo. Lamentablemente, se equivoca. La esquina está comenzando a ceder. ¡Ahí va! ¡Ahí va! ¡Miren! Oh. Oh, no. Me esforcé mucho para construir esa nueva casa y todo excepto la cocina se derrumbó. La casa se derrumbó completamente de un momento a otro. Un par de toneladas de materiales de construcción se perdió y se fue con el río en tan solo segundos. Río abajo, Charlotte Pace cree que su casa puede salvarse de la furia del agua. En ese momento, pensamos que el río ya había hecho todo el daño 
que haría en nuestro sector. Pero lo peor aún no ha llegado. Esa es la casa de alguien. Es muy lamentable. No podía creerlo. Sentía que... Esto no podía estar pasando, que tenía que ser una horrible pesadilla. Cuando la lluvia cesó y las aguas se calmaron, 27 casas habían sido derribadas y tragadas por las aguas. Ese río parecía un monstruo. Miren las olas. Los vecinos de Creekside volverán a construir sus casas. Pero ahora respetarán y temerán más al increíble poder de la naturaleza. ¡Ahí va! ¡Miren! Red Bluff, California. Un bote de carreras compite en estas aguas. En segundos, este competidor alcanza 350 kilómetros por hora. Luego, el desastre. Cuando se despeja la zona, los espectadores están aliviados al ver que la cápsula de seguridad está flotando en la superficie. Pero esperen. Está abriendo la compuerta. La cápsula gira y se voltea. Kurt Watkins y el equipo de rescate están impresionados. El competidor está amarrado y se está ahogando. Cuando yo vi que... Abría la compuerta de la cápsula. Solo pensaba que esto sería mucho peor de lo que ya era. El competidor tuvo mala suerte desde el comienzo. Estos botes deberían deslizarse suavemente sobre el agua. Pero el suyo acumuló demasiado aire en el lado derecho. Los paracaídas se abrieron, pero no fueron de mucha ayuda. Cuando vemos un par de saltos anormales, el tercero es por lo general el que resulta en un horrible accidente. El competidor sabe que debe quedarse en la cápsula hasta que lleguen los rescatistas. Pero está desorientado. Abre la compuerta y la cápsula se hunde. Cuando la cápsula está hacia abajo, es la peor situación que podemos tener. Los rescatistas son rápidos y sacan a este hombre con vida. Solo sufre una contusión y una lesión menor en la espalda. Es un precio bajo para una horrible carrera. Cuando un corredor está de cabeza bajo el agua, siempre existe la posibilidad que muera. Phoenix, Arizona. A reckless fugitive terrorizes the streets in a stolen dump truck. News chopper tracks the pursuit. Even this veteran traffic reporter can't believe his eyes. Get him. Here he goes. Center lane. Red light. This is serious here. Oh, look at this guy. Nothing can stop this madman. The gas tank is full. His joyride could last for hours. This guy's out here threatening everybody's life with a dump truck. Oh, look at that, man. A truck nearly hit him. Even police cruisers are no match against 13 tons of rolling metal thunder. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, man. Almost head on, head on with a police cruiser. Oh, man. He's trying to hit the squad cars. The deranged driver weaves in and out of traffic, hell-bent on escape. Now, I hate to say what's going to happen if he hits somebody because... Police are helpless. They can only watch as the rampaging truck speeds on a collision course with disaster. Red light, red light, and he's going to go right through the intersection. Just, oh! The truck rips through a sedan, then slams into a light pole and screeches down the street. The suspect is still raging. He climbs out of the wreckage and runs. He's running. He's running. Bystander Doug Click is waiting to take him down. 
I told him to lay down. And when I told him to do that, he pulled the bolt cutters out from underneath his shirt. You didn't want it? But Doug has a weapon of his own, a baseball bat. It was game on, and he told me he was going to kill me, and I kind of smiled at him and said, no, I'm going to kill you. He took a swing at me with the bolt cutters, and he was still putting up the fight, and I started hitting him in the head a little bit with the baseball bat then, and that's when the police pulled up. It takes five officers to subdue the crazed suspect. He's still kicking on the ground. Luckily, the people in the car that he hit walk away without serious injury. This reckless flight from the law lasts 45 heart-stopping minutes, finally ending with a bang, a beating, and 16 years behind bars. His nickname is Trouble. And it's easy to see why. High-flying, death-defying car crashes are stuntman Tommy McTagg's passion. This is something I just have to do. I need to destroy cars. I need to crash things. Trouble's trademark stunt is something he calls the dive bomber. It features a crash into a line of cars. The actual cars are put there for a cushion, so to speak. It actually absorbs a lot of the impact. Despite the stunt's danger, Tommy never fails to walk away unscathed. That is, until tonight. Acto, New Jersey. Thousands pack the grandstand for Trouble's dive bomber. Tommy's set. He guns it. But this time, there's real trouble. Tommy's car nosedives, cartwheels into the air, then slams to the pavement upside down. As soon as I hit the roof, there was just this instant pain that went through my back from the top of my head down to my tailbone. The violent impact crushes the roof like a tin can, right on Tommy's head. I was paralyzed. I thought I broke my neck, I broke my back, I, I can't move. Crewmen raced to pull him from the mangled wreckage. Tommy's pinned in agonizing pain. But not only can Tommy walk, he can even take a bow. Despite this display, Tommy has two severely crushed vertebrae. As I'm throwing my arms up in the air, I feel like I'm gonna pass out from the pain. That's how excruciating it was. It's a lingering reminder of the dive bomber, an explosive stunt that nearly ended Tommy's troubles for good. I'll always remember this crash because it was the crash that almost ended my career. That's what this stunt taught me. Every jump is my last jump. Champaign County, Illinois. Two friends, Norman and Orlando, get set to skydive over the heartland. The door opens, but then raw terror. Orlando's chute is tangled on the plane's tail wing. His body whips violently against the fuselage. Norman can only watch. When I saw him hitting the airplane, I was just hoping that he's still OK, he's not unconscious. I was afraid for Orlando's life. As he's about to jump, Orlando's chute deploys too early. Instantly, he's sucked out of the plane. Now he could break his neck, or the chute could snap the wing and send the aircraft into a tailspin. My thoughts were, cut away, cut away, cut away. 
because I'm just looking at the airplane and the tail, and I see Orlando hitting the airplane. The parachute is breaking in pieces. Orlando has one chance. Pull the cutaway cord and pray that his reserve chute isn't damaged. He cuts loose and plummets towards Earth. Fortunately, the reserve chute opens. Moments later, this hellish nightmare is over. Orlando's in one piece, but as the horrifying ordeal sinks in, he breaks down. Once I was on, on the ground uh, and I realized what actually had happened, uh, I started to shake, you know. I actually, then I, I became scared. Lucky for Orlando, he didn't panic when his life was on the line. Or this jump could have been his last. They're off, and it's a good start. Hagerstown, Maryland. They're coming around turn number one. They're really pouring it on. The Harley Davidson Grand Nationals. Everybody's going full out. Lots of chasing and racing. Racer Jake Johnson is in a tight battle for the checkered flag. Jeremy's is in the lead, and Jacob Johnson is in hot pursuit. Johnson spots an opening. He drops down to pass on the inside. Looks like Mies and Johnson are going to swap positions. Johnson's on the fight. Johnson's on the track. But the worst is yet to come. Johnson pushes his bike too hard and too fast. He fights to regain control, but the bike launches him down the track. Three racers narrowly avoid the wreck, but Brian Smith sees it too late. impact is so violent, the bikes break apart. Now Johnson and Smith lie helpless on the speedway. Amazingly, Johnson is able to walk away from the terrifying spill. I look over at the bike and it's broken too, and I was like, oh, that was must have been must have been way worse than I thought it was. I didn't even realize that anybody else crashed. Brian Smith suffers the worst of the crash. I fly probably 20, 30 feet through the air. Hit the ground, I'm knocked out. Lifeless basically. It looks like I should have broke a lot more bones than just the two that I did. Smith is rushed to a nearby hospital. Grateful to have survived. Uh, we're definitely lucky to be alive. I mean, uh, it was a pretty frightening crash for me and for him. So life or death within one second, you know, what do you do? Looks like Beast and Johnson are gonna... Pros like Brian Smith and Jake Johnson know it takes only an instant for life to go from full throttle to a dead stop. Oh! Buenos Aires, Argentina. El presidente de un club de fútbol anuncia que el equipo está en bancarrota y no podrá jugar más. Los fanáticos se enojan y se desquitan con el dirigente del equipo. Alguien de la multitud lanza un tambor que le pega en el rostro al presidente. Sus lentes salen volando. Está mareado con el golpe, pero no se da por aludido. Sigue hablando a pesar de la sangre que corre por su cara. Finalmente, los guardias lo sacan de ahí. Protegen al presidente de nuevas agresiones.
pensará dos veces la próxima vez que quiera pedirle apoyo a estos fanáticos. Southeastern Alaska. Dangerous thrills over the Haines Highway. Extreme daredevils push the limits of 500-pound snowmobiles, soaring off a ramp into the sky and across the road. These machines are not made for flying. But don't tell that to Rob Henlon. He's out to break all the records. Devastating crash is even worse than it appears. Rob manages to separate from the snowmobile before it slams into the rail. It was safer for me to land where there's not extruding metal like handlebars coming up in my face. But the machine catches Rob's left leg and snaps it back 180 degrees. actually kicks himself in the head. And because my left foot comes up and hits me in the face, it knocks me out. Rob's barely conscious. <laughs> Rob has a crushed ankle, and he's destroyed a knee, but only blames himself with overconfidence that it's only 65 feet. Everybody's giving me the okay, and I'm thinking no big deal. As soon as I came off that lip, I knew I was gonna come up short. I could have been killed, I mean, easily. Rob's professional dreams are over. He's lucky he can walk. And after a landing like this, Lucky to be alive. New York Harbor. A parasailer with a propeller on his back circles the Statue of Liberty. A news crew keeps a wary eye. This parasailer is coming very close to the Statue of Liberty. Uh, too close. What they don't know is that Frenchman Tyree DeVoe is attempting a risky and illegal stunt. Landing on Lady Liberty's torch. DeVoe makes his final approach. He overshoots the torch. Now the Frenchman suspended by a thin line, 22 stories up. If there's a sudden gust, the chute will tear, sending DeVoe to certain death. For more than 30 minutes, his life hangs in the balance. This is really bad. It looks like this guy is just dangling by a couple of lines. Rescue crews arrive. They clear tourists from the base of the statue in case DeVoe falls. DeVoe struggles to pull himself up Liberty's hand, but he's weighted down by the propeller. It looks like they're gonna try and haul him over the rail. It takes five officers to yank him over the rail. DeVoe's high-flying ordeal is over. The Frenchman's reckless bid for Liberty lands him in jail. Denmark. Fire has broken out in the city's main business. A fireworks factory. The neighborhood is rattled by explosions on the ground and rockets in the air. By late 
afternoon, the situation is only getting worse. The blaze has spread to all the warehouses on the property. Yet fire officials are confident the inferno will burn itself out by nightfall. They're in for a cruel surprise. The factory is holding twice as many fireworks as allowed. A deadly mistake. is shattered by constant blasts that send shockwaves for miles. Now, the fire has spread all the way through the city. Neighbors must run for their lives. They leave their homes and cars behind to burn. 400 firefighters battle through the night. By dawn, what was once a city now resembles a war zone. The fireworks, designed to inspire a sense of awe. Instead, rain down a hailstorm of fear and destruction. Up next, a robber gets intervened by an off-duty cop. Then later, absolute terror at the window washers. And the streets of Vegas are flooded by a savage storm. When the world's most amazing videos continues. Alicante, España. Un ladrón de banco cree que va a escapar sin problemas. Sale flanqueado por dos rehenes. Usándolos como escudos humanos, se dirige a una motocicleta. Su plan es irse velozmente con el botín a través de las desiertas calles de la ciudad. Pero la policía tiene en mente otra cosa. Mientras él corre, lo están observando y esperando. Preciso cálculo, un auto policial sin marcas le corta el paso. El delincuente es catapultado. Patina violentamente por la calle y se estrella en la acera. Los agentes lo rodean pistola en mano. Lo suben a una ambulancia. Sorprendentemente sus lesiones son menores. Va a pasar bastante tiempo en la cárcel. Gracias a los policías que se esforzaron hábilmente, hay un criminal menos en las calles. Denver, Colorado. Fuertes vientos cortan las cuerdas de un andamio mecánico. Y dos lavaventanas se aferran por sus vidas. El gran aparejo hace perforaciones en el edificio. Súbitamente baja seis pisos y luego oscila para otro impacto. Los rescatistas saben que los hombres no pueden resistir mucho tiempo. Uno pensaba, ¿cuántas vueltas dará antes que esos cables lleguen a romperse? Sentí temor por ellos. Pensé que iba a morir. Dallas Sherman y su colega Carlos García intentan un audaz rescate. A través de uno de los edificios, atrapan la plataforma de 250 kilos. Los lavaventanas corren por el andamio y se lanzan adentro. Aún tenían sus cuerdas de seguridad, pero querían dejar ese andamio tan rápido que... debimos quitárselas porque la plataforma se movería y estaban aún sujetos a ella. 
De modo que al oscilar nuevamente los había arrancado del edificio. Pero gracias a estos héroes, los lavaventanas sobrevivieron el horrible incidente. Son cosas inexplicables, es decir, alguien no quiso que esos hombres se perdieran ese día. Las Vegas, Nevada. A freak savage storm dumps a year's worth of rain in less than an hour. Sin City streets are transformed into raging rivers. All over town, drivers are stranded. One man urgently waits for rescue on the verge of being overcome by the surging waters. But his rescuers are also trapped. Their engines are swamped in the muddy current. The only way in now is through the air. A chopper arrives and hoists the relieved man to safety. But less than a block away, a single mother of two is in dire straits. Angela Conrad frantically looks for help. But all she sees is water. The situation grows more grim. The sudden rush of water submerges her car. I just, I immediately went into a panic attack. The water was coming into my car. Angela climbs out her window, terrified. And the water keeps rising. I didn't think that there was any way that anybody could get to me. I was very upset for my children that they would have to go through life without their mother. Now, Angela's only defense against the raging water is to lie flat on the roof. Every muscle in my body hurt so bad because I was so cramped up. I couldn't even move my arms or my legs, much less swim. At that point, I just, I didn't see any hope. Then, a sound from above. It's a rescue chopper. The officer must work fast. Angela is nearly unconscious. Despite the wind, rain, and the woman's dead weight, he manages to wrap a harness around her and cinch it tight. He's got her. In another second, and Angela would have been lost. But they're still not out of trouble. High winds start the pair swinging wildly, perilously close to high voltage power lines. The pilot steers clear of the danger. I know that somebody was looking over me. I know there was divine intervention. I feel privileged that I'm given a second chance. Consumed by exhaustion, the young mother blacks out just as they reach the chopper door. The flash flood is a terrifying reminder. Nature's wrath can strike without warning and with deadly fury. Pontevedra, Spain. A unique race featuring amateur drivers takes over the back roads. Some perform with surprising skill. Others, not so much. But the fun and excitement of this freewheeling event is about to take a frightening turn. The race car flies wildly out of control, flips onto its roof, then barrels straight for the camera. At the next turn, the accident is captured from another angle. Keep your eye on the cameraman in the yellow coat. The roadster slams him head on, then nearly rolls right on top of him. The 
Amazingly, the man suffers only a bruised knee during the accident. But he learns the hard way that road racing is better left to professionals. Oxnard, California. Traffic backs up at a railroad crossing. Truck driver Teresa Senator starts moving across the tracks. The crossing arm drops right on top of Teresa's cab. I hear a thump, and I'm going, what the heck was that? And I'm watching this gate run down the lengths of my trailer. That's when she spots the train. I knew I was dead. The Amtrak liner smashes into Teresa at 79 miles an hour. The trailer is sheared off and pulverized. There's no movement inside the cab. Then the door opens. Teresa is okay. Oh my God, she is dead. She should be dead. Yeah. She's lucky as hell. Oh my God. The lady trucker walks away under her own power. And she's even carrying her dog. Teresa never sees the warning lights flashing because they are behind her. But when she hears the gate bang on her roof, she knows she's in big trouble. My eyes were going, oh my god. Once that gate drops, you're looking at the less than two seconds before you're dead. I was definitely lucky, there is no doubt about it. By the time I saw the gate fall behind me, I was kissing my butt goodbye. Boom, gone. Tijuana, México. En vivo, en la televisión mexicana, esta hermosa ilusionista está a punto de intentar un truco que desafía la muerte. Anadela se encerrará en un baúl lleno de fuegos artificiales. Y debe salir antes de que explote. Unos explosivos bastante peligrosos porque en cualquier momento, en menos de un minuto, van a explotar. Pero Anadela no es David Copperfield. Es una actriz de telenovelas y tiene poco entrenamiento como maga o como doble de acción. La capucha es la única prenda resistente al fuego en el cuerpo de Anadela, pero ella está decidida. La encadenan, la ponen en una bolsa y la encierran. Encienden la mecha y ya no hay manera de volver atrás. En 37 segundos, el baúl va a explotar. Las hermosas manos de Anadela intentan abrir el candado, pero tiene problemas. Comienza a entrar en pánico y pierde preciados segundos. Finalmente se acaba. Se le acaba el tiempo. Los fuegos artificiales causan una explosión de tres pisos de alto. Anadela no alcanza a escapar. Ahora está en el infierno y en vivo por la televisión. Recuerden que no lleva puesto un traje protector. La estrella se está quemando viva. Los bomberos logran apagar las llamas. 
El error fatal de Anadela fue usar una herramienta equivocada para abrir el candado. Eso le tomó tiempo y no lo tenía. La actriz queda con quemaduras de tercer grado. Pero se recupera y vuelve a actuar en telenovelas. Con respecto a los trucos, se los dejará a los profesionales. Las Cruces, New Mexico. Halftime at the rodeo. Roy Ann Rahman and three other brave spectators volunteer for a dangerous game of bull poker. Whoever stays seated the longest wins the pot. It was a, a girlhood dream to participate in a rodeo. The only rodeo pro at the table is A.D. Stromberg. And there's one other player. This half-ton bull. It never crossed my mind at that time that there would be any danger involved, especially if they asked people to volunteer from the audience. El Toro shows a poker face, and then... The raging animal attacks dealing a savage barrage of blows. The bull goes all in, and three players scatter. Only A.D. and Royanne try keeping their seats. That's a bad call. The thousand-pound bull flips A.D. end over end. Then it charges in for the gory. He tries to stay clear of the horns while keeping the bull clear of Royanne. I saw that girl laying there, and then I knew she was in trouble. I just grabbed his neck and pushed her out of the way the best I could with my feet. She escapes with only a mild concussion. I feel I easily could have died. I'm glad to be alive. A.D. makes it to the fence. He's dazed and a little confused. Then he makes a gruesome discovery. Once I got to the fence, I saw blood dripping down my cheek. So I got my hand and wiped my side of my head. It was a big old flap of skin, my ear hanging off. He'll need 240 stitches to reattach his ear and scalp. I do feel very lucky to survive what happened that day. In this brand of poker, bluffing is not an option. Not if you want to survive. Del Mar, California. Daredevil, Bubba Blackwell, wows the crowd on his motorcycle. He's ready to break another record, or break all his bones trying. Tonight, he'll attempt to jump 22 cars, a distance of 140 feet. That's the most cars ever jumped on a 300-pound Harley-Davidson Roadster. Bubba starts down the track, but aborts at the last second. Something doesn't feel right. But the Daredevil doesn't want to disappoint his fans. So he sets aside his fear and guns it. smashes face first. Crew 
chief, Ron Roberts, rushes to his friend's side. His head had swollen up. It looked like a basketball. He was bleeding out, out his ears and all over the place. It didn't look good. It didn't look good at all. The mood is grim. Paramedics work to find any signs of life. After several agonizing moments, we see the sign. Bubba wiggles a foot. They naturally loaded him up. The rest of the crew guys and I, we went to the hospital to see how he was. It was tough. It really was tough. Bubba should have hit the ramp at 80 miles an hour. As soon as the wheel left the takeoff ramp, you know something's wrong, so. But in the soft dirt, he couldn't get enough traction. We are on a horse track. Bubba didn't get up enough speed for the actual jump. Bubba is in a coma and remains on life support for a week. I feel so incredibly lucky to be alive. As I tumble through the air, you see I do one and a half cartwheels and I land on my head, which gave me a severe head injury. I remember waking up in the hospital wondering what in the world am I doing here? Bubba Blackwell is lucky he woke up at all after cheating death at Del Mar. Pelican Bay Correctional Facility, California. One of America's most violent prisons. Everything seems routine in the exercise yard, but tension is rising between rival gangs. Then suddenly, beatings spread to every corner of the yard. The massive brawl is a coordinated attack. An inmate runs and throws the first punch. It's a signal for everyone else to strike. Security guards fire tear gas and warning shots. The inmates ignore them. The kicking and punching continue. Fists fly in a massive free-for-all. Reinforcements arrive. More tear gas is fired. And the yard is finally locked down. It is the most violent prison riot in California history. Society may be safe from these men, but in here, the inmates aren't safe from themselves. San Jose, Costa Rica. Saprisa. Saprisa Stadium. 23,000 spectators go wild for the nation's greatest soccer team. And then, sheer terror. The bleachers collapse. Fans surge forward in a human avalanche. The fence buckles. Some are trapped. Others trampled. Three dozen people are rushed to the hospital. Thousands of jubilant fans came to celebrate a triumph. Instead, they became witnesses to a tragedy. Still to come, a wannabe stuntman comes up short. As the world's most amazing videos continues.
Miami, Florida. Eddie DePaula of Turley Jewelers helps his first customer of the day. As always, security cameras are rolling. So he comes in, he looks around, he says he wants to buy an engagement ring and that he has a budget. And his budget's about $2,000. Eddie shows the customer several diamond rings in his price range. But this man is not here to buy. And then all of a sudden, bam, I mean, there's a gun in my face. What the crook doesn't know is that Eddie's nephew, Mike, is working in the back. I yell his name. He doesn't know what he's walking into. Mike pulls the suspect off his uncle while Eddie wrestles away the gun. I don't know what got into me. I just reacted. I just take the gun from him. Another look shows how Eddie nearly loses his life in the struggle. I just push the gun away from the direction of my body. The gun goes off. There's a gun just to, to the left of me. There's a big bullet hole in the wall behind me. Now the tables are turned. Eddie orders the assailant to leave. But then Eddie changes his mind. All of a sudden you say, wait, I, I got a big gun now. I don't have to let you go. But the suspect has no intention of going to jail. I shoot a warning shot at, at the ground to calm him down from to sit still. He doesn't sit still. Incredibly, the gunman has the nerve to plead for mercy. He's running all over the jury store. Please open the door. Let me go. Please, 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 please. I'm, you know, I'm sorry. Just open the door. Let's pretend this didn't happen. But Eddie and Mike are in no mood to play games. Eddie slams the butt of his pistol against the man's head. Finally, the police arrive and place the armed robber in custody. I felt grateful that I lived through a situation like that. This would-be groom tried to save money on a wedding ring. Now he'll get a free reception at the Dade County Jail. Huntington Beach, California. An amateur daredevil attempts a stunt on a public street. Paul Fernandez is going to jump his bike onto the roof of an apartment building. Or maybe not. A van tows Paul toward the ramp at 60 miles an hour. Basically, I knew something was wrong as soon as I let go of that rope. He bashes into the wall and smacks the ground. Paul is badly hurt, but with all the cameras rolling, this tough guy is not about to show it. No, it's all right. It's okay. All right, we're out of here. Okay, here. If this reckless amateur ever hopes to turn pro, he'll have to work on his timing. We switched drivers at the last minute, about 10, 15 feet before my takeoff. The van had definitely lost some speed and wasn't going as fast as I thought I should be going. When I knew things were going wrong, I knew definitely there was going to be some kind of injuries. Once my bike actually made contact with the roof, I can't explain the, the excruciating pain. Once I fell backwards from the roof, I landed on my back. Paul winds up with several broken ribs, two sprained wrists, and a gnarly gash on his leg. Just another flash wound, brother. I didn't seek medical attention. That's not my style. Maybe Paul's style is not all it's cracked up to be. I was very lucky to get away with what little injuries I did get away with. No doubt in anybody's mind that I could have died doing this stunt. No doubt. Buenos Aires, Argentina. A tense hostage standoff in a gas station. A trio of gunmen hold three captives. And they're threatening to kill them one by one. The man with the gun to his head is news photographer Martin Filippo. 
quien parecen ser superados y acorralados. A few minutes ago, he was part of the media gathered only feet away from the gunman. But then, a hostage suffered a heart attack and Martin was taken in exchange. The volatile ringleader is called Diego. demands a getaway car. He makes his point with a gun to Martin's neck. Police negotiators stall the gunman. Anxious hours pass. Diego's losing his cool. Suddenly, the robber opens fire. It's only a warning shot. But he fires again. And again. The situation is spinning out of control. Police are running out of time. Finally, they get their break. Diego turns his back. And the cop goes for it. Police storm the building. One by one, they drag out the kidnappers. But what about Martin and the other hostages? make it out alive. A terrifying nightmare is over. <laughs> Nicaragua's Serra Negro Volcano. It's an active volcano and the ultimate racetrack for French cyclist Eric the Red Baron Barone. Today, he's out to set a bicycle speed record. His first run is clocked at more than 163 kilometers, 102 miles an hour. That's a personal best, but not good enough for the Red Baron. He speeds down again. He's at the halfway point, then, <laughs> Eric's bike frame splits in two. Even worse, he loses his helmet. The Red Baron tumbles down the steep slope out of control across the jagged lava rock more than 100 miles an hour with no protection for his head or neck. Eric's crew is frantic. They're afraid he's broke his neck. As bad as it seems, the Red Baron escaped with only scrapes and bruises. He'll go for a new personal best another day. It's enough that this time, he survived the volcano. These are the amazing stories of people caught in life and death situations who made it out alive. Join us next time for more of the world's most amazing videos.